Jesus, that is quite possibly the laziest title screen I've ever seen. Is that title in Curry or new? The Pink Panther, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, The Private Eyes, Better Off Dead, Euro Trip. Remember back in the day when these completely innocuous animated openings were on every comedy and they lasted forever? Yeah, them were annoying as hell. Also, opening sequence contains no holiday roads. Sure, they brought in Mavis Staples, who's a badass, to sing the Christmas Vacation song, but that mother wasn't written by Lindsay Buckingham. Why the hell is this list so short? Even if Santa is only covering the Midwest, there is still no way in hell there would be enough room to fit a few E names, all the F names, and some G names all on the same goddamn page. Har har har, but what's this weak sauce from Santa on his roof game? The roof game is like his entire game. He knows how snow affects that Hey Carl, you know what will be a great gift for the Christmas vacation score? We can see if Ralph Burns is available. He did a perfect John Hughesian score for the first film. Yeah, I guess I was thinking the guy who scored Blue Velvet in that kitty cannibalism movie, Parents, would be a perfect fit for a nice little holiday comedy. Look, if I wanted to see a house designed by a deranged resident to brutally murder intruders over the holidays, I'd wait a year and catch Home Alone. Jesus Christ, the Griswolds are supposed to live in Chicago, so what's with this mountainous terrain? Did they pull the same nonsense Danny did in Doctor Sleep and drive across the country to the Overlook? Dad, can you explain again what we're doing? Yeah, because even though we're almost to the destination that's way out of the city, I have no clue about the very very simple act we're about to perform. Man, I know road rage can be funny in movies, and this is a character that would totally react like this. But now we're going on the third movie of this franchise that makes vehicular malfeasance an actual plot point. Burn some dust here. Eat my rubber. <laughs> Dad, I think what you mean is burn rubber and eat my dust. Young Galecki here is coming off a lot more like young Sheldon than young Leonard. Uh, Dad? Clark is clearly looking in the same general direction as Ellen here, so he should clearly be able to see this truck has pulled up beside him. There is no way the car could keep pace with the truck while driving underneath it like this. It would have already been hit by the back tires and flung out, or would have plowed into the front tires and either been flung out or possibly even crushed. However, you say, this is a silly comedy, so this is uncinnable. And I say, A, this isn't funny, which cancels out the comedy argument. And B, have you watched this channel before? Also, why is the truck staying in the left lane on a two-lane road? For all he knows, he's already passed the Griswolds. Is it just me, or are they intentionally avoiding where the trees are? I know Clark wants to get out in nature and all that, but he's wandering out into the great white open, right past all the actual trees. There it is. A Chicago Bears fan? Oh, he was talking about the tree. I mean, both things have about the same amount of charisma and personality in them. Dad, did you bring a saw? Okay, this movie is set in reality. An exaggerated humorous reality, perhaps, and everything that happens could happen, but you're telling me these four assholes dug this f tree up with their bare hands and did it before nightfall? Looks like the toad overestimated the height of his living room ceiling. <sighs> Insult was not delivered by Selena Meyer, and it definitely shows. Yes, yes, Jason was a thing in the 1980s that a lot of comedies like to poke fun at. But how does the hockey mask work as a protective mask for tree cutting? It has holes large enough for flying bark to get through and f up his face. If the sap was this bad, how do you get his pajamas on? All my life I've wanted to have a big family Christmas. So why do you wait until this year? They've had the house for a while, and the kids are well into grade or high school, right? Sure, life gets away from you and all that, but movies saying a guy that's this delusional about family stuff hasn't tried this before. Word is you're an excellent choice to be named Food uh, Additive Designer of the Year. This line caused me to look up Food Additive Designer, and I will never get that 90 seconds of my life back. The big question is, uh, what are you going to do with that big bonus check? You're going to blow it on yourself, I hope. Are you talking about the cast or the characters? Because I'm sensing we're testing the limits of the noun verb blow. Take a look at this. Just hope my Christmas bonus check will cover it. Well, which one, though? I assume the 33 by 18 option with the full cabana is a little substantially pricier than the simple 18 by 12. Try to be more specific with your premature celebration next time, Clark. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Kiss my ass. Kiss his ass. Kiss your ass. Happy Hanukkah. Hang on, is he a smart ass, sarcastic dick, or is he a clueless, affable asshole? I know Chevy Chase really only has those two speeds as an actor, but dick or asshole movie? You can't have both. Wait. Can I show you something? And welcome to the first of two scenes you forgot about when you fire up this family comedy with your parents. Also, what's Clark so flustered about here? He's in the goddamn lingerie section, so doesn't it stand a reason that a female would be manning the booth? Hell, he has seen an attractive retail employee before, right? Furthermore, think about this poor lady, just doing her job when she's suddenly knocked over by what has to be the 12th middle-aged boner of the day. These were cut really high on the hip. Look, I'm wearing something similar. Marshall Fields really used to have an aggressive marketing strategy for their merchandise, putting the ladies' underwear display right by the window and asking their sales force to model it in the middle of a crowded store. 
What day is it again? The last time we saw the calendar, it was December 14th, and Clark went from his office to the department store, which makes it really weird that Rusty was there, but whatever. My point is, did they invite the parents to stay here for nearly two goddamn weeks? If you rub it for me, I'll give you a whole quarter. Damn, I just realized we have Elaine from NBC's Seinfeld, Dolores from ABC's The Wonder Years, and Leonard from CBS's The Big Bang Theory, which means we have an official network TV bingo. And because I generally hate network TV, that deserves a big bang and sin. I hope he falls and breaks his neck. I'm sure he'll fall, but I don't think we're lucky enough to have him break his neck. Twitter. Ladder disgust or ladder envy? I'm really just looking for any other character traits in these two besides jackass. This is not only not how ladders work, it's not how physics works. This entire sequence of hanging lights has been officially brought to you by Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes for when you want to hilariously and hideously torture a mother but not kill him. Would it be indecent to ask the grandparents to stay at a hotel? Considering how loud you're speaking, I'm pretty sure you just did. Do you sleep with your brother? Do you know how sick and twisted that is, Mom? Look, Audrey has a point, but... This is also a big-ass house, and she could easily crash on the couch of the living room in addition to many other solutions. The fact that Clark hasn't launched a staple through one of these wires, thereby electrocuting the f out of himself whenever he later works on these is less believable than that this house alone throws the entire Chicago City power grid out of whack. Wait, he could have easily dropped down to that first floor roof and walked over the ladder, right? His f feet must have been touching. And why is the carpet all wet, Todd? I don't know, Margo. If these two elitist yupsters are supposedly so cool, why are they living in the suburbs and not the city? Also, seriously, how is blaming Clark not their immediate reaction? There's a f hole in their window that faces the gutter that's clearly hanging off the roof, and Margo was just looking right out the window. Joy to the world! I can believe that Clark wanted to wait until the whole family was here to turn everything on, but this entire bull depends on him not checking any of the lights along the way, which is daffy, even for a doltish, doddering dad. He worked really hard, Grandma. So do washing machines. One angry man here would be excellent at cinema sins. Well, Dad, it was a good try. Jesus Christ, I understand the in-laws going back inside, but someone would immediately be going into troubleshooting mode, right? These platitudes are taking much longer than it would to check the goddamn breaker. All old men are gross and horny and old cliché. I mean, just because it's true doesn't make it any less of a cliché. I'm kind of sick of referring to these absurdly large moons as Bruce Almighty moons. So, because this shit looks like it's about to hit the earth, I'm gonna call this motherfucker the Melancholia Moon. Oh. Hilarity ensues, I know, but this setup is unbelievable. First off, who closes an open attic without asking if there's someone up there? Even the biggest asshole in the universe wouldn't do this. Like, Kim Jong-un wouldn't even do this to his uncle. Second, why can't Clark say anything? It's not like he's gonna give away the secret location of the gifts. They're hidden in that little crack that's impossible to find. Third, what the Attic door f***ing locks from the outside, not allowing the person in said attic to escape. Look at when he opens the hatch. There's not even a spring-loaded latch that would potentially need to be tripped from the outside. If anything, it's shown as too easy to open, given Clark's head injury. Goddamn, this attic sequence pisses me off. Sideshow Clark. Why doesn't he just climb down through the giant hole in the ceiling he just created and quit trying to get warm in the attic? The of Clark watching his childhood Christmas videos is the skippityest skip to ever skip. <laughs> you movie! I'm gonna have a hard time finding odder product placement in a movie than the giant McDonald's poster on the side of a basement fridge. Everybody come out quick! Look at the lights! Chevy Chase says this line so goddamn adorably here that it almost makes me forget that his asshole personality reportedly chased Chris Columbus off this project as director. Almost. <laughs> Everyone's favorite Christmas comedy or the world's worst carpet cleaner commercial? Eddie? <laughs> Man, remember when Randy Quaid only played characters like this? After that long drive, we could use a little private time together. Apparently, the Eddie and Catherine private time scenes were what was cut out from the Adrian Line reshoots. You got a little bit of Mississippi leg hound in him. He'll grab your leg and just go to town. I like this movie a lot, but it comes to a screeching halt whenever Eddie soliloquies about something gross. That goes on for longer than the sound and fury speech in Macbeth. The 18th. By my count, Eddie and his family got here on the 16th, so did nothing hilarious happen in that one day after they arrived? Seems like the previous few days were packed with tomfoolery. It's funny that all the employee gifts to Mr. Shirley are shaped the same, 
name, but what the f*** did everyone get it? One shoe? Soulless evil boss man conducts business behind a comically large desk that is sparsely decorated cliché. Creates a surface 500 times more slippery than any cooking oil. I know there are certain kitchen machines that need lubricant, but why would you make it this slippery for it to be effective? The parts would be flying off left and right in the dishwasher. These people are slicking their saucers up to sled down the mountain too, but Clark's already been riding down the slope for a long while at a tremendous rate of speed. So how big is this goddamn mountain? Did they take an overnight to the Alps? Bingo. F off! There's no way you guys saw all that from right there. He went through a f forest, man. This dream sequence is ridiculous. Everyone knows Chicago doesn't get any warm summer days. If Gus Van Sant ever decided to do an R-rated shot for shot remake of this movie, I guarantee you Clark would be actively jerking off in this scene. Fast times at the Griswold house. Clark blocking. You know, every year he comes to our house. I know Clark's just trying to be nice to the girl, but he doesn't want them to come back here next year, right? Like, just remind her that Santa goes to all the places and something just went wrong last year. Here was full. Ah. How could Clark and Ellen even hear that through the closed window and the noise of the It's a storm sewer. If it fills with gas, I pity the person who lights a match within 10 yards of it. Match shadowing. Also, for how long is this supposed to be dangerous? We see Uncle Lewis blow it up on Christmas Eve, but this is supposedly the 22nd. Did the methane seriously linger around for two and a half days? Merry Christmas! <laughs> Coincidentally, this is what we say to each other when we lock a script for CinemaSins. I'm curious as hell why Eddie has loaded up three different dry dog foods into the cart, including two different bags of Old Roy. When did you move to Florida? Wow, dementia jokes, old people being assholes, wearing toupees. It's really the geriatric tired comedy trifecta. Why would somebody wrap up a cat in a box? Why would somebody make three sequels to Vacation, a reboot, and Cousin Eddie's Island Adventure spin-off? Some questions just don't have good answers, Rusty. Listen here, uh, it's leaking. Long before Prometheus and the Fantastic Four, Ellen Griswold was doing pioneering research into sticking her bare hand into foreign substances. Let's go find your sister. The director said, we don't have any apples left over from craft services, so let's just have this character get all horned up for his teenage cousin to make him look like even more of an asshole. Man, this is like an ASMR video for people who never want to eat amongst other people ever again. Look, I've done a few cat sins lately, even though, of course, I love cats, but they're also a sin, you see? Look at this shit. My hands are tied. I told you you had too many plugs in one outlet. Oh, God. Not how electricity works. It's not the chair, it's some kind of gas coming from the sewer. Then he just leaves? I'm assuming Clark Griswold isn't going to be arrested with Jane Fonda and Sam Waterston in D.C. over climate control protests anytime soon. Your bonus. My bonus. This is such a bonehead move. Doesn't matter how much of an actual check would be here, there's no way Clark would immediately share that with the entire family. With this bonus check, I'm putting in a swimming pool. So even Ellen didn't know? I'm not saying you have to tell your wife everything, but maybe mention that you're going to tear up the backyard and put in something that will take the value of the house down quite a bit, or at least limit your resale to a more niche clientele. It's bigger than you expected? Oddly enough, this is what my college girlfriend asked me when we tried our brief but educational experiment with something called pegging. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Eggnogging your feelings. Like a monkey sh he is! Hallelujah! Holy sh Where's the Tylenol? Jesus Christ, this rant is epic. And since the movie finally gave me a big-ass laugh, I'm gonna go ahead and knock us in off. Well, where are you gonna find a tree at this hour on Christmas Eve? At the cliche convenience store, mother Okay, this squirrel is almost as annoying to me as the f***ing endgame rat. I cut this tree down about an hour ago. Where's it been hiding? Why hasn't it made a goddamn sound this entire time? Why is it only here for stupid comedic purposes when it also could make a bit of f***ing sense? Also, Monopoly. Squirner and Pooch. Gone. If you mean anything resembling a linear narrative in this movie, I'm gonna have to agree with you. Take a look around you, Ellen! We're at the threshold of hell! But Vegas Vacation won't be released for another eight years. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, Clark! Damn it, Eddie is dumb. Extremely dumb. But we're saying he's kidnapped a rich executive that screwed Clark over on his bonus on Christmas Eve dumb, while also saying he's clever enough to find said executive with a very limited amount of information that Clark gave him in an emotional speech? It's, it's people that make the difference. Well, all it took was several glances from the Griswold to make Frank have an entire change of heart. I guess they didn't have time to squeeze in visits from four different ghosts. If you want to come in, you are going to have to break down the goddamn door! And completely without a search warrant. USA! USA! I'm going to go ahead and assume they gave Beverly D'Angelo a massive bonus for having to hold on to Chevy Chase's junk for this long, even if she did it as an improvisation. And I hope it was much bigger than whatever Clark's bonus ended up being. Put one of those carolers in the hospital. 
and that would be a bad thing. Luther! <laughs> to meet you, Victor Hugo. It's true. The Force, the Jedi. All of it. Doctor? 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 What did I say? Nipple? The best word is nipple. That's gonna leave a mark. Is that creaking? <laughs> I'm in the hold of a ship. And there's a candy corn in this one. Well, they can't all be winners, can they? Oh, that was fun. I like the Wizard of Oz. I heard on the news that an airline pilot spotted Santa's sled on its way in from New York. Oh. 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 Well, we'd very much like to meet him. Three. Squirrel! <laughs> 